Michelle Rakati never expected to walk again, let alone swim, cycle, or paddle a kayak. In 2017, a terrible motorbike accident ruptured his spinal cord, rendering him immobile from the waist down. Nonetheless, on a cold, snowy day in December last year in Lausanne, Switzerland, he made his first step outside, with the assistance of a walker, since his injury. His assistance? A new spinal cord implant that connects messages from his brain to his lower muscles, hopping across damaged areas to restore mobility. It only took one day of stimulation. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you this revolutionary device which could pose to be the end of paralysis and all similar conditions. Michel is taking part in a bigger study of a novel, customized spinal cord implant. The implant, developed by Dr. Grégoire Cortine and colleagues at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne, is the first to directly replicate electrical impulses from the brain in order to govern lower body movement. The ability is derived from an experimental implanted gadget that decodes messages in the man's brain that previously controlled his movements, according to research published Wednesday in the New England Journal of Medicine. The implanted electrodes, unlike earlier spinal cord stimulators, are inserted directly into the spinal cord, providing access to distinct neurons that govern lower body muscle groups. The implants may be modified to support a specific activity, stand, walk, swim, or bike, using a tablet, allowing patients to activate their spinal cord neurons like keys on a piano. It worked like a charm. Michel and two other men with full paralysis were able to traverse the streets of Lausanne in a Segway like walker within months. Cortine has had previous experience with spinal cord stimulation. In 2018, his team wowed the field with a stimulator that allowed a paraplegic man to rise up from his wheelchair and take a stride, according to long-standing partner and neurosurgeon Dr. Jocelyn Block. The telephone connections between the brain and muscle groups are destroyed in spinal cord injuries, preventing data transfer. Muscles lack instruction to transform movement intention into real coordinated muscle contractions in the absence of undamaged nerves. The damage also removes feeling, resulting in permanent paralysis. However, unlike the banks of a fallen bridge, the neural infrastructure beneath the injured area is mostly undamaged. It may be able to duplicate the electrical impulses that control our muscles by artificially activating these nerve cells. According to the authors, three decades of study has revealed that stimulation can restore walking after spinal cord damage. However, these are still proofs of concept that have struggled to restore paralyzed people's regular motor functions or help in rehabilitation. The team aimed to do both. They began with an existing stimulator often used to treat chronic pain for the study, which was published in Nature Medicine, but quickly ran into a stumbling block. The stimulators, although being well tested, were not specific enough. Instead, the electrode leads were altered by the scientists. They created paddles with 16 electrodes that selectively target areas of the spinal cord that govern leg and lower trunk motions. Another problem was determining the best location for the electrodes. The researchers created a average spinal cord by imaging the spinal cord and nerve cells of 27 healthy participants. They then used a computer modeling application called Sim4 Life to lay out electrode locations that best stimulate critical nerve targets for lower body mobility. Then there was the software challenge. As the pattern deviates from natural neurobiological signals, the researchers objected to the usual, but considerably easier, convention of continual stimulation. Rather, they opted to program various stimulation patterns to help in a variety of tasks. Previous research has discovered that different activities recruit unique bundles of nerve fibers from the dorsal root of the spinal cord. These ensembles, like cookery recipes, can then trigger various motor recipes. When the original biological hardware is destroyed, it is conceivable to replicate the neurobiology of movement by varying the time and sequencing of stimuli. After placing the implant at the lower back and tailbone, the doctors linked it to a Medtronic device within the belly. The FDA-approved gadget is typically used for deep brain stimulation, but it was co-opted here to allow users to control stimulation at their leisure. With a tablet and a simple clicker, individuals could simply choose between several stimulation patterns to promote an activity, such as standing, walking, or swimming. It just took one hour to set up. The outcomes were virtually instantaneous. 
Within a day, the individuals were able to take a few steps on the treadmill with body weight support on their own. Three days later, their gait had improved and they were able to walk on regular terrain with assistance. Two out of three volunteers, who had previously had no control over their legs, were able to adjust the length of their stride when instructed to do so, demonstrating that the gadget connected their minds and intents with real movement. They moved nearly 300 independent steps on the first day of stimulation alone. Performance increased considerably after five months, according to the authors. All three folks were able to support their own weight and function normally in their regular lives. They could readily walk for six minutes without any further aid if they used a walker. Michelle was even able to climb stairs with minimal assistance. The group rejoiced at their newfound independence. They were able to go about their daily lives as the stimulator assisted them improve their trunk position, also known as core strength and posture. Standing at a bar, enjoying a drink. On a lake, paddling a kayak. I'm doing a lap in the pool. The stimulation aided muscle healing even more. All three men had an increase in leg and trunk muscular mass, and two of them were finally able to regulate some muscle action even when not stimulated. The results, although exciting, are yet preliminary. Dr. Jocelyn Block, a collaborating neurosurgeon, and Cortine envision a library of electrodes to target spinal cord damage at various anatomical and injury levels. According to Dr. Reggie Edgerton, a leading expert in the subject, the work is unparalleled in that it mixes cutting-edge implants with neurobiology and a dash of intuition and innovation. This gives those with spinal cord injury cause to be optimistic. Chang's team has previously created a method for recognizing brain signals connected with the desire to pronounce certain phrases. The method worked in persons who could still move and talk, according to tests. However, success was far from assured in someone like BRAV01, according to Chang. The scientists began letting BRAV01 compose phrases after he could dependably generate words on a computer screen. The researchers created an algorithm that examined the context of each word as it was introduced to assist increase accuracy. According to Krishna Shinoy, a professor in Stanford University's School of Engineering, a gadget that can decipher words in the brain might potentially benefit thousands of people who have suffered a stroke or a severe brain injury. According to Shinoy, such a gadget might also benefit those suffering from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, a debilitating condition that finally renders it difficult to communicate. The findings are only the beginning of a wider investigation. The researchers was eager to point out that the subject's normal motions were not totally restored. Even with practice, their walk remained awkward. The implant necessitates spinal cord surgery, a technically difficult technique that restricts the number of skilled neurosurgeons and may be costly. The team is already contemplating the next steps, such as allowing individuals to manage the implant directly from a smartwatch or phone. Because various motor programs require different stimulation algorithms, the team is also using AI and cloud-based computing to build new stimulation recipes. Michel, on the other hand, is having a good time. He's happy to be back home after nine months in Lausanne. In the last several months, I've been through some fairly tough training, and I've set myself a number of targets, he explained. But what makes him the most emotional, he says, is that, I witness the change every day. So, what is your opinion on this new approach to curing something that has been plaguing humanity since its inception? Do you believe that this has a wide scale of application and could really cure thousands of people who are currently permanently suffering from paralysis? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.